should Bernard Sanders, should Bernie Sanders run uh, as a third party candidate if he does not get the Democratic nomination? Um, I don't think he ever would, and he's never made any type of, um, you know, any type of signal that he would even entertain any idea. He's always been, you know, he, he said he'd, he would always fall in line and support whatever, um, you know, nominee, um, if it's not him, you know, it's looking much more likely that's going to be Joe Biden, even though, just, Jesus Christ, Joe Biden is such a horrible <laughs> candidate on so many levels, and doesn't seem like he's a very good person either with the, you know, regards to the sexual assault allegation, which seems very credible against him, who may a uh, former uh, staffer when he was in the Senate, then you have things like the Iraq War, which led to, you know, hundreds of thousands of Iraqi civilians being killed, their country being completely uprooted and destroyed by our um, illegal war. He was a big supporter of that, NAFTA, which led to a million plus manufacturing jobs being outsourced from the U.S., uh, a good chunk of them, good paying. He's wanted to cut Social Security multiple times as a senator, doesn't support Medicare for All, and this is even during the pandemic that we're experiencing, doesn't support a Green New Deal, uh, the, the, the corruption, uh, the very serious and obvious and sad cognitive decline that Joe Biden is also experiencing. You have all of that, and yet, you know, Bernie Sanders is willing to just fall in line and so, say, "Yep, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna support, you know, whoever the nominee is, even if it's Joe Biden, and he's, you know, maybe slightly better on a few issues than than Donald Trump. I'm still gonna vote for him." It's like, oh, Bernie, Bernie, Bernie. At least, okay, at least hold out the idea that, you know, let's say if Joe Biden does not pick, I don't know, a progressive vice president, you know, like maybe Nina Turner, or I don't know, I just feel like Nina Turner would just be an amazing vice president, or I don't know, somebody like Ilhan Omar, somebody like that, um, if he doesn't pick somebody like that, then I'm not going to, I'm going to run third party or I'm going to hold out my support. I'm not going to endorse anybody. I'm going to, I'm going to pull a uh, Elizabeth Warren and just sit on the sidelines and you guys can go, you know, fuck off because you're not actually fighting for any policies that will, you know, impact the, the working class in the U.S. in a positive way. You're not for health care. You're okay with you're not for universal health care. You're still okay with people dying because they don't have health care. Um, you're okay with people going bankrupt. You don't support tuition-free public college. You're okay with people being shackled with tens and thousands of dollars of student loan debt because they're trying to, um, you know, better themselves and get an education in order to, you know, either just learn more, which is obviously a good thing, a well-educated populace, that's a good thing, or, you know, because they're going to, um, you know, want to learn and get knowledge to, in, you know, enhance their employment prospects. He's not for a Green New Deal. He's wanted to cut Social Security in the past. He supported the Iraq War, um, the bankruptcy bill. He bragged about working with segregationists, all of these things. I mean, um, you know, I, I frankly, if I was Bernie, I would at least again, uh, put the idea out there that I'm not going to support this candidate unless he actually supports some of these really important policies that I support. But again, the problem with that is that, you know, he could have this conversation with Biden or his team and they, yeah, yeah, okay, I'm going to go out and, you know, if you support me, Bernie, I'm going to support Medicare for all now and a Green New Deal and canceling student loan debt and ending the wars and a livable wage and ending the, you know, racist, um, you know, prison, uh, you know, prison industrial complex and, you know, all of, all of these things. And then he could just, once he's president, he's going to, like gonna switch he's gonna go back on all of that shit so it's like what what would honestly be the harm of bernie sanders running as a third party candidate um 
I think the Green Party in 2016 offered Bernie a seat after he was, you know, basically cheated, excuse me, out of the nomination uh, in a lot of ways through the trickery of the, you know, DNC, basically just being another campaign arm of the Clinton campaign, how, you know, people at CNN, like Don in Brazil, I believe, uh, who worked there and who's also uh, part of the DNC, was feeding Clinton's team's questions before the, you know, debates that they had and, you know, all of these things. Why, why would you be so quick to throw in your lot with the Democratic establishment when they've fucked you over so many times before and aren't willing to stand up and fight for any of the things that are really important to Bernie from a policy level like universal health care, like a Green New Deal, like canceling student loan debt, like ending the wars, like reining in Wall Street, like a Green New Deal, like a livable wage, uh, like expanding and protecting Social Security, etc., etc. If he, you know, was really a true revolutionary that car is going way too fast on but he would be willing to buck the status quo and actually make a stand and like no I'm fuck you guys if I'm not the nominee and you don't actually have a candidate up there who is going to fight to make sure people don't die due to lack of health care so people don't go bankrupt because of our for-profit health care system somebody who's not going to fight for economic, racial, and social justice, then screw you. I'm going to run third party. I'm going to take up the Green Party on their offer to run, um, you know, on their on their platform. And again, the Green Party um, supports a lot of the same things that Bernie Sanders does, but oftentimes they're even further to the left, further populist, um, and then than Bernie Sanders. And I mean. But again, he's he's never he's never going to do that. And I think, um, from my opinion, or from my perspective, I should say, Bernie, along with a lot of these other leftist leaders, <clears throat> either in the House or the Senate on a national level, like Bernie, like AOC, like Ilhan Omar, like um, you know Rokana, like Rashida Tlaib, they they talk a good game, but they're not out there calling for these really um, you know, radical and much needed steps like we are right now. Like Bernie, he should be saying, you know, I am I'm telling people to go out on a general strike if we don't get a emergency UBI and Medicare for all passed right now and we don't cancel student loan debt and we don't enact rent and mortgage freezes. Um, you know, I'm telling people to go on a general strike, to go on a rent and mortgage strike if we don't get these things done. He's not out there saying that. AOC is not out there saying that. Ilhan Omar is not out there saying that. Uh, Rashida Tlaib, Elizabeth Warren, these other so-called progressive leaders aren't willing to really put their necks out there, if you will, to you know say what needs to be said that we really need some really radical and revolutionary um uh, just policies and people who are willing to to advocate to really throw a huge wrench in the system in order to get the things that we need again this is during a pandemic if you're not willing to take a stand right now during the biggest economic crisis that the United States has experienced, at least, um, you know, compared to the Great Depression, and potentially it could be worse with the unemployment levels that some um, economists and even people within different, you know, Federal Reserve banks are saying it might get up to 30%. The high during the Great Depression was somewhere around a little bit under 25. If you know, Bernie and Ilhan Omar and, you know, all these other progressive leaders aren't willing to call for these, you know, what might seem like radical measures, but are much needed in order to, you know, exert some influence, exert some force on the political establishment to actually get these things done that people really need in this time of need. When, when are they going to do it? So it's like Bernie, um, you know, you know, really, you talk about, you know, wanting to lead this political revolution and, you know, really fighting against the Democratic and Republican establishments. But when the rubber hits the road, he's not willing to really um, 
put his neck out there and say what needs to be said. And, you know, I'm not the only one who's obviously point, pointed this out. And there's people with, uh, you know, much bigger platforms like Jimmy Dore, who's really been hammering away on this point, and as well as people like um, Kyle Klinsky of, of Secular Talk has also made the point that these leftist leaders, when it comes to, um, you know, really just, you know, taking the taking a radical and revolutionary stance in this pandemic in this economic and public health crisis there they all supported that horrible you know stimulus plan that gave 4.5 trillion dollars um you know to to bail out these huge massive corporations while um you know the average person in the u.s just got crumbs if that and that's even you know months down the line that they might be seeing those crumbs at best so again you know we need to hold these so-called progressive leaders accountable and I just see a lot of failings um, from them right now and it's really disgusting and, and discouraging from my perspective because again if you don't have the political courage during a pandemic as a so-called progressive um, you know leader whether it's in the house or the senate what's what's the point of electing you if you're not willing to stand up and fight for what's right to actually you know make sure the average person in the u.s has you know a ubi so they're able to pay pay their rent pay their mortgage put food on the table pay their car notes etc during a pandemic what's the point of having What's the point of voting and supporting you if you're not willing to take a stand when it's needed the most? Again, people are really suffering and hurting right now. There's a lot of, you know, people dying and getting sick due to the coronavirus. And I mean, it's just, again, a total lack of leadership and any type of, you know, adequate message from people like, Bernie and AOC and Ilhan Omar, Rashida Tlaib, Rob Khanna, Elizabeth Warren, Sherrod Brown, etc., etc. And so, I mean, that's just another example, again, of why Bernie Sanders isn't going to run as a third party. He's beholden to the Democratic Party. He doesn't want to rock the boat at all. And, you know, that's what he would have had a lot of leverage if he, at the outset, had said, you know, I'm... I don't know. I don't like Trump did the same thing uh, during the 2016 uh, um, Republican primary. He was basically saying, I don't know if I'm going to support the you know Republican nominee if it's not me. Bernie should have said something similar and said, I don't know if I can support them if they don't get on board for Medicare for all. Uh, Green New Deal, canceling student loan debt, livable wage, um, ending the wars, um, legalizing weed, taxing Wall Street, a wealth tax, um, you know, getting all nonviolent offenders out of prison, uh, you know, etc., cetera, etc., cetera. Um, you know, uh, totally getting rid of the U.S. empire. We have, you know, over 700 bases around the world. Uh, but yet, yet we can't give you know health care to our citizens. You know if the nominee, if it's not me, if they don't, if they're not willing to support this thing. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe I won't support them. So again, um, just we really need to hold these so-called progressive leaders accountable when they fail in these really huge ways. And in my opinion, this is one of the ways that Bernie has failed is that he's not willing to speak truth to power <clears throat> in this context and he's not willing to go out on a limb um you know it could you know it could obviously hurt him you know politically and you know whatnot but sometimes you know you got to be willing to um you know put put your cl political career on the line i should say for what is right and obviously you know making sure that the Democratic nominee is actually in support of a lot of the policies that you support. Seems like that would be kind of important, Bernie. And again, just the same thing with what's going on right now during the pandemic. He's Bernie's not out there and none of these other progressive leaders out there aren't calling for a general strike, aren't calling for a rent strike, aren't calling for, you know, all of these things that, you know, could potentially leverage um 
you know, some outside leverage to, to force the political establishment to actually address the needs of the people during this pandemic. So um, those are my thoughts. I would love to hear yours about, um, you know, Bernie running third party, why he hasn't, if he should, as well as the um, total lack of any type of real leadership right now from the progressives um, with regards to, to this pandemic and the, the response to it. Uh, leave your thoughts in the comment sections down below. Please subscribe if you haven't already. Peace. Much love.